Here, we are going to learn a technique of velocity analysis called the instantaneous center method. This is based on the fact that the planar motion of a rigid body at any given instance can be mod modeled as a pure rotation. Like every rotation, this too will have its center or an axis, but it might change or shift the next moment and therefore it is called as the instantaneous center. Now let us see how to find this instantaneous center and for that we are going to look at this rigid body given to us here. We have been given two points in the rigid body and we know the velocity of point A completely and we know the direction in which B is moving. Uh, we don't even know the sense whether it is moving downward like this or upward like that but this information is sufficient for finding the instantaneous center. Since the body is rotating at this moment, then every point in this body must be moving along a circular arc, at least in the vicinity of its current position. And since the velocity is always tangential to the path, this velocity indicates the tangent to that arc. So we can drop a perpendicular to this tangent so that we get the radius and the radius would point to the center. So here is our first pointer to the center. We don't know where it is, but it must be somewhere on this line. Next, we do the same at point B. We drop a perpendicular and wherever these two perpendiculars intersect, that must be the instantaneous center. Once we get the instantaneous center, we can find the angular velocity of the body because in circular motion, velocity is given by r, the distance of a point from the center, into omega. So knowing the velocity, we can find the omega. And once we know this instantaneous center and omega, then finding the magnitude of velocity and direction of velocity of any other point is easy. To find the velocity of, say, this point b, we take the distance i b from the instantaneous center to the point and multiply it with the omega that we just found. Next, we are going to apply this technique to two bodies. So here are two rigid bodies and like before we have been given velocities of two points in each of these bodies. Using them we do the construction that we did before and we find the instantaneous center of each of this body. So these are the instantaneous centers and we also know their angular velocities. Having found the instantaneous centers, we can do away with this initial data and connect the two instantaneous centers with a line. So here is the instantaneous center of the red body and that of the green body connected with a line. We can consider this line as a part of one of the bodies, like say the red body here. And then the velocity of points on this line would vary like this. We could have done it the other way too. We could have considered that line as a part of the green body and then the velocity of points on that line would have varied like this. If we superpose these two velocity distributions, then there is going to be one point where the velocity will be the same, whether it is part of the red or part of the green body. And that point is a common point between these two bodies. It is common from the point of view of velocities. Whether it is considered a part of red or the green body, it will have the same velocity, same direction, same magnitude and the same sense. In fact, we can drive a nail through this common point C, passing through both the bodies and at least for a moment it will not be torn apart because at that point both the bodies are moving in the same direction with the same speed. This is what an observer external to both the bodies would see. We are going to see an interesting implication of this point C, the common point, in the next video. To recap, the planar motion of a rigid body can be considered as pure rotation at any given instance. And at that instance, it will have a center called the instantaneous center. When we have two bodies, then we can find their instantaneous centers. 
and on the line joining those centers we find a point whose velocity is the same whether it is part of one body or the other.